Hi everyone. Today my guest is Daniel Pigeon, the um, author of many articles uh, about Komodo and basically the voice of Komodo. Hi Daniel. Hi. So tell me please, how, how come you're in Kiev and what is the, the purpose of your stay and your visit? Um, well actually uh, I'm in Kiev um, not with reasons not exactly related to Komodo. Um, oh, okay. I live in Helsinki, Finland right now and um, Actually, I'm an American with an American passport, so I needed some time out of the EU. Um, and so my girlfriend and I took a trip here, and we've been here for about 10 days. And yeah, we've been really enjoying it. Kiev's a cool city. And you're going to go back to Finland now? Uh, yeah, on Wednesday. We fly back to Helsinki. Okay. Mm -hmm. So y you've, you've been enjoying. What have you visited? Uh, well, we went to a lot of different places. Um, I'm going to butcher the names because I don't really remember, but we've seen some of the cathedrals, some of the main cathedrals that are kind of up on the uh, the mountainside. Um, and we've also been to some really nice restaurants. And then we went to the island in the river, which I told you about on the way here. I can't remember the name of it. but Yeah, um, yeah on the beach. Yeah, exactly, we went yeah. to the beach. So yeah, we've been really enjoying it. It's so beautiful. would you, do you like the city, this city as much so you would come back here? Oh, 100%, yeah. Okay. I would definitely come back. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about um, Komodo and um, how did you get involved and what is your position in the company? Okay, sure. So um, I'm the technical writer for Komodo and so I do a lot of writing, um, blog posts, press releases, marketing materials, um, helping with some of the copy for the website and things like that. So I've been involved with the project since um, January of this year. So I joined uh, Komodo right about the beginning of the year. And um, yeah, so at first I started off just doing a little bit of writing, kind of like um, part-time freelance work, and then eventually joined the team full-time uh, about six weeks ago. And so yeah, so um, that's my role is pretty much working with the marketing team and also with the development team to understand some of our technologies. and. Um, trying to understand them and then explain it in really simple terms to, uh, to a wide audience. Okay. Uh, could you tell me about um, the plans and um, in this time that you have been working with Komodo, what have you accomplished, the team as a whole, and what are the plans for near future, let's say like six months? Okay, sure. So a lot has happened in the last eight months. We've actually had a lot of uh, pretty big developments. And so some of those are uh, well, more recent ones, like we've signed a couple of uh, recent contracts to allow fiat gateways to make it easier to purchase KMD coins with fiat currencies. Uh, there was one big partnership with a company called NetCoins, which allows people to use fiat uh, to buy KMD at 21,000 different locations. Um, we have a different one. Um, well, this with peer to cred. So that's it's actually not a fiat gateway to Komodo, but it allows people who own Komodo to spend it as if it were fiat. Um, so that's been a couple of things that just happened in the past week. Um, technology wise, we have developed some new features to allow um, scalability, to some new scalability features. So for example, um, we're testing a new system that will allow up to 1 million transactions per second. That's the goal right now. We've only hit uh, over 20,000, which is still the industry leader. I mean, no one else has, has gotten 20,000. Um, but we're preparing for a new scalability test that will allow us to get up to 1 million. So if we can do that, it will be a huge breakthrough. I mean, it, it's bigger than Visa, MasterCard, you know, everyone out there combined. Uh, we also have some new interoperability features, which allows basically the whole platform, uh, all the chains on Komodo platform to communicate with one another and they can verify transactions that happen on any other blockchain in the ecosystem. Um, so some really cool stuff that we're developing. Some of that stuff is, it's not fully released yet, but we're almost there. Okay, I've read actually about the um, 1 million transactions and uh, the, um, its possibility to put 100 payments in uh, a single transaction. Yeah. So it's a much bigger thing than just the 1 million Absolutely. payments. Yeah, it's gonna be huge. And so another thing to actually point out about that is that's not just something that's limited to Komodo or Komodo platform. Any project that builds on Komodo, they can, it's, it's basically limitless scalability. So you can scale, if one project 
um, builds and they want to be able to host a million transactions per second individually, just that project. And they have the resources to um, support, like if they have enough servers, enough hardware to, to support enough chains and enough processing power, yeah. then any project can do that. It's basically limitless. So like, awesome. yeah, it could be 10 million, it could be 20 million, as, as much money as you know, we can put into servers and hardware. There's really no ceiling. So there's no limit by the um, the servers, basically the the mechanism. So right. as, as much as you can place there. That's exactly right. So like the way that the code is written, um, you know, it's uh, the architecture is such that each chain is completely independent from every other chain. So there's never any congestion. Like there's never any. If one project gets really busy, for example, and they for whatever reason are just have a huge increase in the number of transactions that they need to process. That doesn't slow down any other project on the platform. And so at the same time, that project, if they get super busy, they can just keep adding chains. They can just like pay for more servers, add more hardware, and scale up as far as they need. Um, so there's never any possibility of, of a project being limited by the technology. That's awesome. So there's like no top. You can just go. That's right. That's exactly That's right. That's so cool. Yeah, we're excited. And. Um, what are your competitors? Um, that's a good question. And so like a lot of people, traditionally, the way that they think of Komodo, they, maybe the first thing that comes to mind for some people is like a privacy coin. So they might think of our competitors as being like Zcash or Monero, for example. Um, and so Komodo, originally, we were a fork of Zcash. So we have um, zero knowledge proofs, ZK snarks. That's in, like written into the Komodo code and every chain on the platform um, has the option, it's optional privacy, it's not mandatory. So if you want, you can do a regular T transaction, which is transparent, or if you want, you can do a Z transaction, um, which is private. So you have that option there, but I would say our main competitors um, would be other blockchain platforms. So if you want to build, if you're interested in launching a blockchain or starting um, a blockchain project, or even if you're like an existing business and you see a use for blockchain technology in your existing business model. Um, you can build on Komodo and you have all these benefits that other platforms can't provide. So for example, like the scalability that we just discussed. Um, also interoperability. So, you know, like we have atomic swaps. Komodo has done more atomic swaps than anybody else, uh, which is peer-to-peer -peer transfers of uh, coins or tokens. So, you know, we have all these advantages that other platforms don't and we would really like to encourage people to come build. That's awesome. We would like to tell people about your uh, project really more and more. It's, um, it's a really cool project. So the biggest problem of uh, cryptocurrencies is um, crypto-based project is um, security and scalability. Scalability we have discussed already, mm -hmm. but can you tell more about how do you solve this in the project? Sure. So we have this really cool feature. It's called delayed proof of work. So like most blockchains, well, I won't say most, but every blockchain has a consensus mechanism, which is essentially how they confirm that transactions are valid to make sure that people are not spending the same coins or tokens twice. Mm -hmm. So there's like proof of work, proof of stake, for example, are two big ones. Um, Bitcoin uses proof of work and we developed a new security uh, mechanism called delayed proof of work. And essentially what it does, it takes all of the, every 10 minutes, it takes all of the blocks, all the transactions that have occurred on any chain in the platform, and it saves it um, onto the Bitcoin ledger. So the reason that we, it doesn't have to be Bitcoin. We can choose whichever blockchain we notarize onto. Right now we're using Bitcoin because it has the largest hash rate, so it would be the most difficult to hack. Um, so yeah, so basically like if you can imagine every 10 minutes they take the, the notary nodes, Komodo's notary nodes, they take all the transactions and blocks that have been produced in the last 10 minutes and then they save it directly onto the Bitcoin ledger. And so this is process is happening every 10 minutes. So in the case that there is any sort of, um, any sort of attack or if there is some kind of problem, then they can look back at the last backup that was made at the most, it'll be like 10 minutes, maybe 11 at the very most. So there's really a very, very small window of opportunity um, to alter the blockchain, to alter transactions. And it provides this really super high level of security, basically providing the entire ecosystem 
with the same level of security as Bitcoin. Because if they, if, uh, they wanted to hack you, uh, as, as you wrote, uh, basically, if they wanted to hack you the full way, the, they'll have to hack the blockchain, um, blockchain of Bitcoin also. Yeah, exactly, because they would need to change the last notarization. Like yeah. So if the notarizations are being made every 10 minutes, uh, and there's some sort of attack, we can just look back at the last notarization and say, okay, like, well, these new transactions are not valid because they don't match the last backup. So if somebody wanted to go into the Bitcoin ledger and change that, they would essentially need to overpower the entire Bitcoin network, which, you know, not very likely at this point. It's not possible. <laughs> yeah, basically, right. <laughs> okay. There is a huge difference between a uh, market of um, 2017 and 2018. Uh, what are your thoughts, uh, what are how the market is going to look like in by the end of this year? Oh, that's a tough question. Um, it's really hard to say. I mean, my personal thoughts are, and this maybe is not necessarily um, representative of the Komodo platform team in general, but just my personal thoughts. Um, I think that the correction in the market was actually really good. I think even though now it's an extended bear market, um, which a lot of people are not happy with because obviously people aren't making the same kind of money with investments that they did in maybe November and December of last year. Uh, but the benefit to the bear market is that a lot of the projects that are not contributing, that are not offering any new innovations or new technologies, um, they're getting exposed. So people can see which projects are actually creating and offering real solutions and which projects are just um, you know, pump and dump, just a bunch of hype that aren't really, there's no solid technology behind them. It's just um, a bunch of empty promises, basically. So in that sense, I think that the bear market is helpful for crypto in general, um, because the companies that will remain at the end of this bear market, they will actually be projects that are set to provide some real solutions and change the way that uh, the global economy works. So you think uh, the market's gonna be a lot uh, basically smarter than uh, last year's? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I think that what happened late last year, it was a lot of speculation. It was a lot of people who just thought that they could get rich overnight. A lot of people who maybe didn't really understand blockchain or didn't understand cryptocurrency very well, just throwing money at it because they thought that maybe they could, you know, get rich quick, which there's nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, it's probably not a sustainable way for crypto to develop into the future. Yeah, that's <laughs> really right. What do you think is necessary for uh, popularity of uh, cryptocurrency, for, get, for it to get popular and for everybody to really start getting use it, to use it? Um, well, I think there's a few things that have to happen. So one is scalability, which we talked about. Um, it's pretty obvious that some traditional blockchains are pretty limited. Um, like Bitcoin, for example, can only process about seven transactions per second. Uh, which is really slow. So that's a problem. If, if it's going to be adopted globally, you know, seven transactions per second is just not going to cut it. And then other projects like Ethereum, um, for example, they have smart contracts, which is, you know, a huge, brilliant development, um, but also limiting because if there's a lot of projects built on one blockchain, there's congestion. So like I said earlier, if one project becomes really popular and they need to process a ton of transactions per second really suddenly, um, it slows down all of the projects that are built on that same platform. So even though there's a lot of projects on Ethereum, um, they can't really scale because uh, they can't grow if other projects are slowing them down. So I think that a couple things need to happen. One is scalability. Another one would be simplicity. Um, just making it really easy, making crypto super easy to use. Uh, right now, some people might feel a little uncomfortable with it, or if they're not really into technology, maybe they don't really quite understand how it works. They might be afraid to get involved or they might not know how, where to start. So that's where some of the things like fiat gateways will come into play and also being able to use crypto for everyday purchases. Um, I think stuff like that will go a long way towards mass adoption. So uh, what you've told me right now is basically what you already have. Your, your platform already does that. Yeah, so a lot it's not, of it. it's not gonna slow if there's gonna be a lot of projects on it. It's it's not gonna slow down. And you're, uh, as you said, you're also connecting gateways f for fiat and abilities to spend Komodo as fiat. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're, we're, we, our approach really is, um, you know, we believe that all of these issues have to be tackled at the same time. So there are some projects now that might choose one and say like, this is, you know, they focus on one aspect of blockchain tech. They might be focused on scalability. Other projects might be focused on interoperability um, or some just solely on security, whatever the case may be. We think it has to be all of them at the same time at once. And so that's how we approach it. Um, and we're trying to address each different issue. And I think we're doing a pretty good job of it so far, I hope. That's awesome. Yeah. I like, I like the way you're um, talking about this. It's, it's very inspiring. And the last questions, uh, question, what can you wish, uh, wish our uh, viewers and what can you advise um, on the market? W what is happening on the market right now, as you said, the, the speculation and the, the projects that are um, going away, the bad projects, basically. Right, yeah. Um, what can you advise? How can they understand which one is good and which one is bad? Okay. That's a good question because I think the traditional answer or the answer that a lot of people would give would be like, do your research, which is good advice, but it's also, um, it's not very specific. It's pretty vague. So I would recommend start by reading a white, reading a white paper before you make a decision about a project. And um, even that can be a little difficult because if you're not really familiar with the techno like technological aspects of blockchain, the white papers might not be um, super clear. But another thing you can do is look at um, GitHub. Um, I recommend checking out every project's GitHub repo. And so you can see the number of commits that they have and the number of, um, you know, basically the number of tasks that they've accomplished. That's another good indicator. You can join communities, for example, on Reddit, on um, Slack or Discord or whatever the case may be. And, you know, see, get a feel for how active it is. Um, you can get a feel for, you know, the project's development team, how active they are. Uh, and also just take a look at a project's um, messaging. So what I mean by messaging is like, what is their vision? What is it they hope to accomplish? What are their goals? And how do they see their project contributing to the blockchain industry in general in the future? Okay. So I hope that's helpful. I mean, I can't, I can't offer any, um, you know, specific financial advice about what projects to invest in and which ones not to invest in. But um, yeah, I'd say the three big ones would be um, read the white paper, check out GitHub, and then join the communities and just have chats with the team members. Okay, great. That's awesome advice. Thank you. Yeah, thanks very much. Okay, guys. So this was um, Daniel Pigeon from uh, Komodo. Like if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel and share our videos. Bye.